Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 4th of June. India escapes brunt of cyclone Nisarg to killed in storm-related incidents. Businesses in Pakistan struggle despite East lockdown restrictions. And Afghan leaders condemn killing of a prominent cleric in Mosque Blast. And now for all the details. India escaped the brunt of cyclone Nisarg that swept into western provinces of Maharashtra and Gujarat, leaving behind a trail of destruction, though on a small scale as it weakened after making landfall. Two deaths were however reported in Maharashtra's Pune district in storm-related incidents. India escaped the brunt of cyclone Nisarg that swept into western provinces of Maharashtra and Gujarat, leaving behind a trail of destruction, though on a small scale, as it weakened after making landfall. The provinces escaped the impact of the cyclone after the winds gusting up to 75 miles per hour changed direction and the storm made landfall further south on India's western coast than expected on Wednesday. Two deaths were, however, reported in cyclone-related incidents in Maharashtra's Pune district. Various parts of Maharashtra, including its capital, Mumbai, received rainfall in the aftermath of the cyclone on Thursday, and there were also incidents of water logging. We are Mumbai, we are seeing rain आह ये remnants of the cyclone है मतलब cyclone निकल जाने के बाद कुछ patches रह जाते हैं वो इनसे तो develop होते हैं उसी का एक भाग है और ये कुछ देर तक intense spell देंगे जब तक इनसे तो है उसके बाद में निकल जाएगा thousands of people were evacuated from Maharashtra, Gujarat and the Union Territory of Daman and Diu along the western coast in view of the impending adverse weather. Nisarg was the second cyclone to strike India in two weeks and the first to hit Mumbai in over a century. India on Thursday reported a record number of 9,304 COVID-19 positive cases in the last 24 hours. The total cases of the infection in the country stands at 216,919, including 6,075 deaths. Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu provinces and capital New Delhi remain the worst hit by the deadly virus. India's COVID-19 tally crossed 216,000 mark on Thursday after a record number of 9,304 positive cases were reported in the last 24 hours. The total cases of the infection in the country now stands at 216,919, including 6,075 deaths. The worst hit provinces are Western Maharashtra and Southern Tamil Nadu. National capital New Delhi remains the region with the third highest number of cases in the country while northeastern provinces emerge with more infections. The increasing cases of the pandemic come at a time when the restrictions have been largely eased except for in containment zones. Amid the COVID-19 crisis, Indian government continues to bring back standard citizens from different parts of the world via flights and ships. On Thursday, around 700 Indians stuck in the Maldives were set to sail back home under government's Samudra Seto operation. Moving on, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his Australian counterpart Scott Morrison held an online summit on Thursday, focusing on ways to further broad-based bilateral ties in a range of areas. The two sides also unveiled a shared vision for maritime cooperation in the Indo-Pacific and signed seven agreements focused on crucial areas such as defence and rare earth minerals. India and Australia sealed a deal to get access to each other's military bases, a pact that would clear the way for more military exchanges and exercises in the Indo-Pacific. Modi said India was committed to expand its relations with Australia on a wider and faster pace, noting that it is important not only for the two countries, but also for the Indo-Pacific region and the world. 
together with you know, our friends such as Prime Minister Abe, um, this has been so important. भारत ऑस्ट्रेलिया के साथ अपने संबंधों को व्यापक तौर पर और तेज गति से बढ़ाने के लिए प्रतिबद्ध है यह न सिर्फ हमारे दोनों देशों के लिए महत्वपूर्ण है बल्कि इंडो पैसिफिक क्षेत्र और विश्व के लिए भी आवश्यक है इन न्यूज फ्रॉम पाकिस्तान Business owners in Pakistan's Karachi city are struggling to make ends meet although shops have reopened amid east lockdown restrictions but sales have collapsed Shop owners and retailers in Pakistan's Karachi city are facing challenges although businesses have reopened amid east lockdown restrictions but sales have collapsed Business owners said that opening up shops from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. as per government orders is not enough for sustainable operations as a large majority of buyers are not coming due to time constraints. They said businesses have been severely impacted due to the coronavirus lockdown and many of them are unable to pay salaries to their employees and rent to their property owners. मार्केट से यही है अब ये सुबह इन्होंने बोल दिया 8 बजे कारोबार करो और शाम में 5 बजे बंद करो. तो इस तरीके से तो कारोबार नहीं होगा ना सही है सुबह आठ बजे खोल लो मगर ये है कि सात बजे आठ बजे मार्केट है इतना तो कम से कम देने चाहिए इनको टाइमिंग के हवाले से अगर आप बात कर रहे हो तो इस हिसाब साहब से इनको देने चाहिए बाकी ये है कि जिनकी रोड की दुकान है उनको तो बहुत ज़्यादा फर्क पड़ता है पाकिस्तान बिगैन अ फेस लिफ्टिंग ऑफ इट्स कंट्री वाइड लॉकडाउन ऑन मे नाइन्थ डिस्पाइट अ राइजिंग रेट ऑफ केसेज अ मूव पोस्ट प्राइमरिली बाई फ्यर्स ऑफ एन इकोनॉमिक मेल्टाउन The country reported 85,264 confirmed cases and 1,770 deaths as of Thursday. In news from Afghanistan, Tuesday's explosion at a mosque in capital Kabul which killed two people including a famous cleric has drawn nationwide criticism. President Ashraf Ghani has called the attack a crime against humanity and appointed a team to investigate. Afghans and political leaders in Afghanistan have condemned the killing of a prominent cleric in Tuesday's mosque attack in capital Kabul. The explosion at the Kabul mosque killed two people including Ayaz Niazi, a famous scholar for his fiery sermons in which he regularly criticized the Taliban, the government as well as US led foreign forces in the country. Second person who was killed in the attack was also an outspoken religious leader. Afghan president Ashraf Ghani called the attack a crime against humanity and appointed a team to investigate his office said on Twitter Ghani also visited the hospital where Niazi's body was brought head of Afghan peace talks with the Taliban Abdullah Abdullah said criminal terrorists had once again struck a towering religious figure and that they view great religious scholars as a major threat against their extremist ideology The mosque targeted in the attack is one of the most heavily guarded in Afghanistan and in the same district where several embassies of foreign organizations are located. No group has claimed responsibility for the attack so far and Taliban has also denied involvement. Taliban's deputy chief Sirajuddin Haqqani has said the group will pursue both peace talks and jihad in Afghanistan. He made the statement in a message to mark the completion of training of a group of Taliban suicide bombers at an unknown location recently Sirajuddin Haqqani the deputy leader of Islamist militant group Taliban said the group will still continue the path of jihad or holy war and strengthen its military power despite its belief in the peace negotiation talks as one of the core components of the solution to the conflict in Afghanistan In a message to mark the completion of training of a group of Taliban suicide bombers at an unknown location, Hakani said that the peace process does not mean the Taliban will abandon the path of jihad. Footage released on the group's social media platforms show a group of Taliban fighters wearing suicide vests who are passing in a parade in front of Taliban's military commission. Meanwhile a UN report released last week stated that the Taliban has failed to fulfill one of the core parts of the US Taliban agreement namely that it would break ties with Al Qaeda The agreement was signed in February in Doha after months of negotiations 
According to the report, a new group named Hijbe Vilayat e Islami has been created outside Afghanistan, which encompasses the splinter members of the Taliban who are opposing the peace agreement with the US and the Taliban. The report says that the senior leadership of Al Qaeda remains present in Afghanistan, and relations between the Taliban, especially the Haqqani network and Al Qaeda, remain close based on friendship, a history of shared struggle, ideological sympathy, and intermarriage. Nepal suspended climbing and trekking activities in March because of the coronavirus pandemic. With prolonged lockdown in place, people employed in expedition and trekking activities stare at a bleak future as their source of employment and income has stopped due to halt in economic activities. Nepali climbing guide Tashi Lakpa Sherpa would have been on Mount Everest now guiding clients and trying to add another feather in his cap, a ninth ascent had it not been for the coronavirus. His sitting in Kathmandu worried about his future as a guide of climbing expeditions, a key source of employment and income for the Sherpa guides. Nepal, home to eight of the world's 14 highest mountains, including the Mount Everest, suspended climbing and tracking activities in March at the start of the peak summer season because of the coronavirus pandemic. एक सीजन बंदा मैथ ही गोई सके पच्चे आर को सीजन पे नहीं इस टाइप खाल कुछ नहीं जीरो एक्टिविटीज रायो बने चाहिए यो एक्सप्लोरेशन यो माउंटेनिंग सेक्टर चाहिए टोटली तरह के डिजास्टर आये हों जा। Unlike established mountain guides like Tashi, thousands of other share pass are facing greater hardship. Many have returned to their villages, hiking officials say. Share pass an ethnic group living in the Everest region of Himalayas. Have always been the backbone of mountain expeditions there, fixing ropes, ladders, carrying loads, and cooking. According to tourism officials, about 200,000 people are employed in expedition and tracking activities in Nepal. The pandemic broke out just when they were making final preparations for this year's March to May summer climbing season. The Himalayan nation has so far reported 2,300 coronavirus cases of which 278 have recovered and 9 have died. The death of a pregnant elephant in India's southern Kerala province after it ate a pineapple stuffed with explosives had outpoured rage and grief across the country. India's Environment Minister Prakash Javadekar has assured the case will now be investigated by the central government. Amid the growing outrage over the shocking death of a pregnant elephant after it ate a pineapple stuffed with explosives in India's southern Kerala province, Environment Minister Prakash Javrekar has said the incident will now be investigated by the central government. There has been an outpouring of rage and grief after the tragic visuals of the elephant dead in a river went viral on social media. But this kind of killing is absolutely unacceptable and we have already deputed our senior officers there and we will nab the culprits and punish them. The elephant strayed from Silent Valley National Park looking for food and some locals reportedly gave the mammal a pineapple stuffed with the firecrackers that burst in its mouth which led to severe injuries in its lower jaw. The elephant later collapsed in a nearby stream and locals were unsuccessful in their attempts to rescue the elephant. The incident took place on May 27th and ignited outcry on social media this week. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. India escaped brunt of cyclone Nisak to killed in storm-related incidents. Businesses in Pakistan struggle despite East lockdown restrictions. And Afghan leaders condemn killing of prominent cleric in Mosque Plast. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Asia Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Asia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
सब्सक्राइब टैग टीवी यूट्यूब चैनल एंड प्रेस द नोटिफिकेशन बटन